Welcome to Plant-Based Kidney Health. Michelle Krosmer and Dr. Sean Hashmi here. Dr. Hashmi, can you talk to us today about kidney disease and cognition and brain health? And is there any connection or link? Yeah, this is an incredibly important question. And it's something that most patients, especially as they start to develop kidney disease, they don't realize what's really going on in the background. When your nephrologist or your dietitian talks to you about why it matters that we lower the protein in the urine, why it matters that we correct metabolic acidosis or anemia or high blood pressure. Oftentimes, all we focus on is we need to preserve the kidneys. But what we forget is that there is a very clear axis between the brain and kidney. And that axis goes both ways. So in other words, brain is controlling kidneys in terms of outcomes, vice versa, the impacts of kidneys on the rest of the body is also affecting the brain. So what the data shows is the longer that you've had chronic kidney disease, the more that you have metabolic acidosis, more acid in the blood, the more protein you're spilling in the urine, the more blood pressure issues you have going on, the more likely you are to have neurocognitive deficits. In other words, issues with memory, remembering things, fogginess, all of those things are linked. And most of us, myself included, we haven't learned enough about the connection. In other words, most specialists, the challenge with specialists is, is that they tend to stay in your own lane. So as a nephrologist, I tend to stay in just the kidneys. That's my organ, but that's not the case. Kidneys are interconnected to every organ and we need to be aware. So what happens is when the kidney function starts to decline, you start to have all sorts of inflammatory markers that are starting to float around in the blood. And as these factors start to float around and this inflammation occurs, you actually start to reduce nitric oxide inside your body. You also start to reduce nitric oxide inside the brain. And the thought process is, is, remember, nitric oxide helps the blood vessels to dilate. So because there's less of it present, you have less dilation, you have less blood that's floating in the brain. So we call that hypoperfusion. And the bottom line about all of this is you start to get subtle white matter damage. Now, that white matter damage over years and years will start to translate into a number of things, mood changes, sleep-wake cycles, and etc. Why? Because there are so many neurons that control very specific things. For example, there are neurons linked to our noradrenergic or serotonergic pathways involved in the brain to the body. Those pathways are involved in things like sleep, wake cycles. They're involved in our motor control. So if you ask anybody on dialysis how well they sleep, 10 out of 10 patients will tell you their sleep is poor. Part of that is because of the fact that this whole idea of kidney disease and the inflammatory markers, they're leading to the brain and they're affecting our ability to get well, deep, restful sleep. And we try to cover that up by saying, you know, take melatonin or take a X, Y, and Z supplement, which usually, in my experience, don't do much. The other stuff is you may have um, acetylcholinergic neurons. So those neurons are involved in memory. And then there's the issue of toxins or uremic toxins. And where do uremic toxins start? They actually start in the gut microbiome. So the gut bacteria is where the uremic toxins are produced. Depending on the types of foods you're eating, you can create what we call a leaky gut. And a leaky gut concept is you have these really tight junctions. And by eating certain foods, you're creating openings. And those openings allow more of these toxins to get through and into your blood. Of course, by eating certain foods, you're going to create more of a toxic effect going on anyways. So we know that when we look at uremic toxins, vegans, vegetarians, even folks who are just sort of semi-vegetarian, meaning they're having fish, um, what you'll find with those, all those groups of so pesco-vegetarians, lacto-vegetarians, lacto-ovo-vegetarians, vegans, all of those folks will have less uremic toxin production than the typical meat eater. That data is very well done. It's clear. We know about it. And if you switch the diet over, you do it for about four weeks. The amazing part of it is, is you can start to transform your gut into a healthier option. 
So bottom line is, is the brain is intricately connected to kidney disease. If you have kidney disease, you got to make sure that you get it controlled as fast as you can, as well as you can. Correct the acid, correct the protein you're spilling, correct the blood pressure, correct the hemoglobin issue or low blood count issues going on. And if you have diabetes, absolutely get diabetes under control. And for those of you who have very mild things and your doctor has told you you have pre-diabetes, please do not get into the false sense of confidence that pre-diabetes is safe. It's not safe. Your body doesn't care if it's pre-diabetes or diabetes. It's starting to do that damage and create an inflammatory condition. So for pre-diabetes, work on that with your uh, physician, with your dietitian, with your healthcare team so you address that right away. All right, there you have it, brain and kidney disease. All right. Thanks guys. And you can check out what Dr. Hashmi was talking about of, you know, controlling blood sugar and protein urea and blood pressure and uremic toxins. We have other videos all on those topics. So check those out as well. Um, that way you can get some more specifics on how to help correct, or at least um, make those parts better. We'll see you next time guys. Thanks guys.